jQuery mobile. And if we don't want the defaults, if we want to set our own styles and create our own style palette, how we can do that. Let me check, see what we have here. Remember where we left off last time. All right, we had this guy. And again, a lot of the Thanks, Bing. Oh, I know. I got to start the start the XAMP server. There we go. All right, we had this, which was a um, a website that um, had existed in two versions with uh, a lot uh, or, or with many shared, uh, much shared content between the two versions. Here's the full version, and then we had the mobile version that was styled using jQuery mobile. And we set things up like that. We also use another example that we'll be downloading and looking at later um, that's taken right out of the textbook that was for um, the Tartanator. All right. The question comes to what if we want a different look for this page? Um, because if you notice, what, how does our page look this way? I don't know, maybe, that's a, maybe that is a, a um, confusion, confusing question. Why does our page look this way? Our page gets stuff from several different places. We have a base CSS file. That just creates colors and, and things such as that. We then have a mobile CSS file. But we also have, oh, I'm not showing the code, a mobile CSS and a base CSS. But we also have our jQuery mobile CSS file, all right, and JavaScript that goes in and takes and based on the data roles that we define for the different elements, it styles them a certain way. So some of the styling happens automatically. All right. Actually, I don't want to look at this example. I'm going to instead look at the Tartanator one. And the Tartanator one will find a very similar thing, but that will be a better one to look at because that contains the forms as well that we're going to look at in the second part of the lecture. So let me go off to Angel and grab this. And we'll see a similar thing insofar as there'll be our CSS code, but then there will also be CSS code built in the J -Mobile, or jQuery mobile framework that gets applied automatically to some of these elements. So let's go down here. And here's my example.
right. So if I go localhost, chapter 6. In other words, how do we know that this gets that color? And so on. Because that is stuff, the style for this comes from a number of different places. And if we're going to look at the code for this, we'll see that This again, we have the jQuery mobile style sheet, plus we have our own style sheet that we put in there. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to use these data themes. Looks like they already are using them, but I'm going to do it from scratch and I'm going to pull uh, and use. Um, a tool that they provide on their site to create my own theme. And that tool is called the jQuery Mobile Theme Roller. What you can do with this is you can create, let me guess this doesn't work in IE. Let me open up Chrome. What you can do is you can define essentially little themes or swatches, a collection of them. And then you can apply those to the different elements. All right. You actually can create swatches A through Z. So that gives you 26 of them. So that gives you quite a bit of flexibility. One nice thing that you can do with this too is you could then, if you want to, you could go in any number of different ways, but you could allow the switching. Maybe seasonally you switch between different swatches simply, simply by switching the data theme that you assign to different things. Here are some global settings. Like for example, what font families we want to use what the active state means, the way the corner buttons look. We can make them be more or less curved. And so on down the line. But then we can go for these different swatches, A through Z. And we can define for them different colors. So for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the A swatch, the header bar, to be yellow. So the header footer bar for swatch A I've defined to be yellow. I can then go and define for, let's say, a button. I can define, let's say, one of these buttons to be green a read-only button or a link list item. We can define as green. And so on down the line. We can configure as many of these as we can want to. Okay, so the A I'm going to make, the A theme I'm going to make yellow and, um, and green. C, let's say, the C theme I can make, um, let's say, red and blue. Did I grab blue? Oops, there we go. And I can point that to that. So what this does is, again, it's a nice tool because we don't have to know the ins and outs of how jQuery Mobile is styling everything. We can simply graphically go and set up the page or, or set up the style of how we want it to look. When we're done, we can then download this theme file. And what this will do is this will create a zip file containing two versions of the theme. All right? A compressed and an uncompressed. 
By compressed, they don't mean zipped up. All right, it's not going to be a zipped up file. It's going to be a file with all the white space removed. If you think about it, if you're running a website with a really, really high volume, anything that you can do to save a few bytes is a good thing. All right, so by getting rid of white space in a CSS file, the browser will understand it just as well, but it'll download a little bit quicker. That's why if you ever notice the source code to Google, their home page looks like a mess. No one could possibly read that, right? Why do they have it like that? Well, they develop it in a way, well, you know, like you would with good white space and all that. Then when they're done, they take all the white space out. So what gets delivered, delivered to the browser is very concise. It's as small as it needs to be. Uh, if you think about it, how many, uh, you know, how many times do people access that page? You know, millions of times a day. So anything they can do to like, cut down the bandwidth a little bit is a good idea. That's exactly what we're doing here when we export it. I'm going to give it a name, and I'll call the name uh, of the theme, uh, let's say Monday, because it is Monday. And I'll click Download Zip. All right. It'll go and it will save that. Let me go and extract this to the desktop to take a look at it. All right, we can now look at the little test file that they send us, which shows us how it looked. All right, and it tells us where to, uh, where to put the code. Um, where is the folder that they put? It's called dist. Oh, it's called themes. All right, again, if you notice, the full version is 34 KB, the compressed one is 19 KB. If we look at this, if we open them in, net, in uh, Notepad, let's open this in. This is neatly formatted so you can read it and maybe manually go and make changes, whereas this is just one gigantic line of code. And because of that, they, they compressed it out so it's easy to see. So, what are we going to do with this? We're going to take this, I'm going to take this Monday style sheet, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to um, uh, work with the uncompressed version. And I'll go and I'll pop it into my folder, all right, and if we look at the instructions, it will tell us what to do with it. Put it before this CSS file, all right. Now they suggest that you keep the themes folder intact. You don't have to. I moved it out of the themes folder, in which case my path will be a little different to it. So I'll go in here and edit this index file. And I'll put my style sheet in here before theirs. And since I'm not having it in a themes uh, subfolder, I'll get rid of that. Well, what does that do for us? That really doesn't do anything for us yet. All right, we have to go and we have to say which elements on our uh, on our um, uh, within our our page get these particular themes. So I can go, for example, on the source for this. 
and I can say, this guy, I want to have a data theme of A. If you remember, the A was the yellow one. I could then go and say that one of these other things on the page, let's say the nav bar, has a data theme of C. And those correspond to the different letters that I saved when I created the theme. So now when I go and do that, if I go and look at that page, doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? It doesn't work because Make sure I save that. Doesn't work because my style sheet is in the way. Let's switch the order of them. I'll be darned, not working the way that I expected it to. Let me, let me get rid of this style sheet altogether. Repeat that, please. I think it's called the body to data roll page. I think that's what the Oh, duh. I have the min in there. That still doesn't matter. Did I save this? Okay, that's the other folder though. Let's go here. Chapter 6. And I have Monday.css. And I am in index style sheet, link rel Monday.css. And I put that there. Let's see where the tips say I'm supposed to put it.
body data or we'll say data theme is a All right, let's try this again. Take two. Let me look at, actually let me look at the CSS file before we do this. Okay, there's our swatch A. All right. So wasn't this hard when I did it earlier today? I don't know what the deal is. All right, let's take a deep breath and try again. Let's go to the theme roller. I'll bet you I know what's wrong. And there we go. Yay, finally. All right, your challenge is to tell me what I did wrong. I did something wrong. I made a kind of a bonehead mistake, obviously, quite clearly. What, did, what ended up fixing this? Why were the other 20 attempts that I tried not successful and the one attempt successful? Uh, you're close. I was using a new theme with old versions of the jQuery mobile stuff. In other words, if you look at what I had in the jQuery mobile code, I had this.
I had jQuery 1.64 and all these different things going down the line. However, when I downloaded this, the instruction said I needed to use it with a newer version of the jQuery. jQuery 1.3, jQuery 1.9. So that's an important thing to notice, all right, is that your theme has to match the version of jQuery. And thankfully, they give you a sample index file that tells you how to use it. Questions about this? Let's do this again with another file so we have a clean take on it. Hopefully I can get this right this time. I'll go to my theme roller. I will define a theme. A will make green this time. everything green. B will make everything brown. Alright. So now I go and I download this. I will give it the name of Monday 2 for this theme. I'll download the zip, open it up. I get this index file that tells me how to use my themes along with those two style sheets. So the index file tells me, if I look at it, to put this code in here. But, and here's the big but, what I did incorrectly last time is I didn't copy those three statements underneath it. I didn't think I had to because this was already set up for jQuery Mobile. However, it was set up for the wrong version. So let me go now and copy that in there. And I'll copy it into the index again. Actually, no, let me copy it into the Tartans page. But notice that the jQuery it wants to load is of a higher version number. This is what I had in before, and the one above is the one that the theme roller was telling me to use. So when I tried to use a theme that I created with the new version of theme roller with the old J jQuery code, didn't work very well. So my answer, of course, is to use the, the code that they've given me. I'll do that. And then I will copy this themes folder over here and there's the one that I had before. And now I'll go to the Tartans, and the Tartans has that look which we can then go in and by putting in the, the data theme of A or whatever, we can get the look that we want to. And there we have the green on top. Alright, so we have one bad attempt, one good attempt. 
The moral of the story is, is that your theme needs to be in sync with the other files that you're running for jQuery. Therefore, if you have already jQuery files in, get rid of them and paste the ones in that uh, the sample gives you. All right. Boy, that was traumatic. All right. Now on the forms, okay? We're going to look at this example to create a tartan via this. And this calls a builder PHP file, a build PHP file. And the reason for that is if we look, we have the same code repeated four or five times. Whenever you see the same code repeated several times, that ought to be a sign to you that there might be a better way to do it than simply brute force duplicating the code a certain number of times. And that's exactly what we're using PHP for. Remember the job of PHP. The job of PHP is to create web pages on the fly, is to provide a set of instructions that create web pages. Well, in this case, the web page contains actually six things that are the same. Therefore, it makes sense for us to look and say, well, if we have things, something that we want to repeat six times, instead of us hand coding it six times, let's write code, put it in a loop, and execute that code and loop through it six times so that we get our six buttons. And that's exactly what we do here. If we go in and look at the build PHP page. Let me close some of these. Did the same thing last week, didn't I? So if we look at this PHP code, we'll see it has the jQuery mobile stuff in it. All right. But this section here, I'm going to make the font a little bit smaller so that we can see more of it. Our page is pretty much just plain old HTML until we get to here where we have a chunk of PHP code. Remember how PHP pages work. PHP pages are just plain old HTML files in which there's some PHP code embedded. And that PHP code can do all sorts of things. But the bottom line is, is the output from the PHP code is likely going to be some kind of HTML. In this case, we show how PHP is flexible, and that flexibility is a good thing in one respect, but in another respect it can be very confusing. Notice what we're doing here, the highlighted line. We begin a PHP tag, and we begin within that PHP tag a for loop. How many of you have seen for loops in other languages? All right. The way a for loop works is this. Everything within the body of the loop, and I'll review what I mean by the body of the loop in a second, everything within there is going to get repeated a certain number of times. In this case, it's six times. How do I know that? Because I'm using the variable i as a counter. All right, i is a variable. A variable is a storage location. We're going to start i off at zero. So the first time through the loop, i is going to have a value of zero. That's what this part of the for statement tells me. 
This part tells me that every time through the loop, once we finish the loop, we're going to increment i by 1. That's what dollar sign i plus plus means. It means add 1 to it each time through. How do we know when we finish? We keep doing this loop as long as i is a value less than 6. So, if we're going to walk through this, first time through the loop i has a value of 0. i is less than 6, so we continue. It has a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. After it has a value of 5, it comes up. Increment by 1 as a value of 6. i is no longer greater than, or I'm sorry, less than 6. Therefore, we stop. All right. So this loop ex executes 6 times. i has a value of 0 the first time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we stop as soon as i is no longer less than 6 when it hits 6 because 6 is not less than 6. Okay, so what are the statements that we're executing here? We're really not executing any PHP statements. We have a block of HTML code that we are going to output that goes from here to here. All right. PHP, like JavaScript, uses those curly braces to indicate a block of stuff. All right. Now here's the interesting thing. We start a PHP tag here. We say that, all right, we're in PHP land now. We then end that PHP tag here before we close the loop. So all this HTML code comprises the body of the loop. The end of the loop is way down here. When you first learn that, that's a little bit odd, um, that, that, that the language is so unstructured that you can do that. But you can actually start a PHP if statement, go out of PHP, have a block of HTML, and then go back into PHP and end it. Or in this case, we have the start of a loop to say, hey, execute some block of statement six times, we then have that, that block of statements doesn't consist of PHP, but consists of brand, you know, plain old HTML. And then we close the loop there. So, in other words, everything between here and here gets executed six times. What does that mean? That means that this chunk of HTML gets sent to the browser six times. All right. Now, what does this look like? Notice that we pop into PHP a couple times in here so that we give it a number. All right. Let's view the HTML source that's outputted. If we were to look at all these, all these colors, notice the first color it has a ID of color 0. The second color has a color of color 1. The third color has a color of color 2, an ID of color 2 down the line. So in other words, in this code, we assign the ID as being the word color, a dash, and the value of I. That's what that print I does. So in this case, notice that we're executing PHP code smack dab in the middle of an HTML code. All right. That sometimes takes people used to more structured and more formal programming languages. That kind of throws them for a loop. But with PHP, really, you have sort of ultimate flexibility to pop in and out of PHP where you need to. All right. Is everyone clear how we get the six sets of color. We get it because we have a loop six times. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six colors, sets of color. What does each color consist of? It consists of a drop down that has an ID of color dash and then a number. And then it has a stitch count for each one, which is simply a, um, 
Well, it, it's actually something else. It's actually a type of range. And we'll talk about a range control in a second. So each iteration through the loop, we make one of these things. Questions about that? We do it six times. So if we change that to 15, we'd have 15 of them. And they'd be numbered color 0 through color 14, the IDs. Now, let's look at this because this is an HTML5 control that you may not be familiar with. HTML5 offers any number of different forms elements. And one of them is a range. And the range is a nice little slidey bar that you can slide back and forth. All right. In this case, the range has an ID of size and a number, so it will be size 0, size 1. The minimum value is defined as 2. The maximum value is defined as 72. And it's done in two, uh, two point uh, increments. And the initial value of it is set to 2. So when we first go to this page, these uh, ranges are all set. To 2. And as we slide it over, it goes in increments of 2 till we finally get to 72, and that's the maximum. So we can pick a number between 2 and 72, and it travels in, two, uh, in, in increments of 2. Also nice thing is, is there's a little text box next to it. Not really a text box. Notice we don't have that here. That's something that the uh, jQuery mobile framework adds on. To sort of tell us what the exact value is. So we can slide it back and forth, but that automatically gets updated. Questions about this? All right, so that's an HTML5. There's other HTML5 uh, form, issue, uh, form controls that you can use as well. One thing you do need to be aware is, is um, again, you don't always get uh, great uh, uh, browser support on all of the HTML5 uh, form items. Let's look and see some of the other things that jQuery Mobile does for us. All right, here we have a couple of text boxes. We didn't really specify any sort of data role for that. So this is simply the way that jQuery Mobile is going to style the text boxes. Here's the input for the text and so on down the line. Here we specify a data role for this of field contain. Let's look up and see what that does. Password fields use input for. Oh, we're simply grouping together the label and the drop down. So that's all the role of field contain does. It associates the label and 
the text. The, well, the not the text, but the other uh, form control. This only scratches the surface of the different controls, the different HTML5 controls and the styling that you can put on them in jQuery Mobile. For example, there's a new HTML5 type, uh, input type for number. So we can say type equals number. And when you get that then, you can use the arrows to click up or click down. There's an email address and so on. Now the way that this works is if you encounter a browser that can't handle one of these controls, it treats it like an ordinary text box, which is actually a good thing, which is kind of how you'd want it to happen, right? Let's go in and let's just for the heck of it add some different form elements to this form just to see how they get implemented. So let's add, we'll add at the very top of the form. Let's start out by adding a radio button. So we'll just add a set of radio buttons and we'll see how it gets styled. Let's just copy a couple of these. Save it and all right. Here's our radio buttons for name. And there we see the three options, all right, stacked vertically. Let's see if we can go and style that differently using jQuery Mobile. So let's go and search This says the default works this way. All right. That's kind of what we saw. If we give this a, if we change the data roles on these things, we can again go in and set them up.
to give a more mobile look for it. All right. By us having the pairing of the label and the radio button, we now have this look that looks like this. And as we go and we select it, we get that action. You may remember when you took CISS 216 that the label is often used for accessibility, to, to tie together the, the, the text description of a radio button with, um, with the actual radio button itself. And here jQuery Mobile uses it to give um, the text for uh, the radio button. To give it that certain look. Um, we can go in here on the set And by going in, whoops, We're going to use some of these other advanced form elements that we talked about in CISS 216. Such as a field set. And we get the pick an option and that down there. If we specify a data role control group for that, notice we get, whoops, those set up like that and get that kind of styling. Again, the point isn't to go through and exhaustively talk about all the different things that you can style and, and how you can style them. The point is, is, is notice, notice what we're doing here. That's sort of the bigger issue. First thing we're doing is we're really following good HTML coding practices to a T. All right? Some things that maybe you know you let slide in other cases, we're following to a T. In other words, we're using the field set to group some options together. We're using a label to associate the text with the radio button. We're using all those things. Those are things you should be doing. All right? For accessibility reasons, you should be associating a label with the option, with, with the radio button option. But that also has styling implications that jQuery Mobile can take advantage of. So this kind of nudges you in the direction of, of following good coding practices anyhow. So that's a good thing. And then we can get easily these different looks by simply applying the proper uh, data roles. What if we want them horizontal? All right, we can then add to that a data type of horizontal. I don't know why that one is off. 
I must have some stray HTML code in there or something to do that. Oops. If I put the labels after the radio button, we'll see if that takes care of it. Oops. No, it didn't seem to. Unless I didn't save it. All right. I must have some stray HTML or CSS that's messing that up. So nothing is jumping out at me. Can you put the data cap horizontal on the same line as the field that field contains? The data wrong field contains? I thought that's what it should. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I did that incorrectly. Thank you. There we go. There, whoop. Field set data role control group. Let's just copy this. There we go. Then we have the options like that. Notice that as you pick one, it gets picked. That's, again, it's almost hard to believe that this is just regular HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as viewed in a browser. Because it has a very much a very modern app-like look to it. All right? Um, So the one thing I want you to do, again, is, you know, we went through some examples in class of, of how this works. Your one assignment is to take one of your mobile pages, I forget which one, and create a version for this uh, that has the mobile, uh, the jQuery mobile uh, look and feel to it. But take your time and play around with the features and try for different looks and try for uh, using the theme roller to create your different swatches and set things uh, the way they are. At some point, I don't think I've assigned it yet, but we're going to have a form example where we go and we create a form um, that has um, you know, a jQuery mobile look where you get to experiment with these elements as well. Any questions over any of this? Now, um, I have noticed in this class also, we're, we're a little behind uh, the assignments. I did notice a few things got turned in, but um, I did not assign a new assignment for this week, and Wednesday we'll have a work day. So please bring your stuff uh, to work on um, and, and catch up. All right, so um, I want to keep things moving. But I also don't want to bury people in brand new stuff when we haven't gotten all the other stuff down yet. We have had an issue FTPing to the server. Has anyone been able to do that lately? All right. I'll, I'll try to work on troubleshooting that. In the meantime, you can, you can run, um, if you have the, the server software, the, the XAMPP uh, installed locally, you can run it that way. And, and I would hope by Wednesday I'll have that resolved for this class. Questions? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I would like you to to, to investigate with the, the yeah the swatches just a little bit. You know, you don't have to go crazy with it, but yeah, it's just to get familiar with it. And remember to use the matching version. All right, that lesson should stick vividly in everyone's head. It will stick in my head. And you know what the funny thing is is of course I I you know I I. I 
you know, we, we go through this at different times. I remember, I remember troubleshooting this with students and I remember telling them, oh no, you know, you see you pulled the thing. So it just, um, what they say experience is when you recognize the mistakes that you made after you've made them or something like that. So I guess that's uh, the case here. All right. Um, that, I guess that's it for today.